Eye tracking software specialist Seeing Machine swung to a first half profit recently as a licensing deal with heavy machinery company Caterpillar boosted revenues. Seeing Machines also announced a further development with joint venture partner Takata for Driver Monitoring Systems or DMS. Ken Kroger is Seeing Machines Chief Executive. He joins us now. Ken, welcome. Good morning. Um, tell us a little bit more about what's going on here because you've got this um, swing to profit. Uh, explain what's that, what that's made up of and if it's repeatable. Well, it is a, you know, this lump, there was a part of the Caterpillar transaction was a lump sum, $21.5 million, um, and accounting standards dictate that we count that as revenue in this current financial year. So I think we've received about half of that cash, the other half to follow over the next year and a half. And um, so profit, we expect profit to dip back down, but also then to come back up as Caterpillar licensing starts to ki kick in. So remember, there was a royalty component for both hardware sales and for software sales. Mm. Outside of the Caterpillar deal, how is the rest of the business going? Yeah, it's interesting times. You know, we're uh, exploring spinning out the automotive sector uh, from the company right now, and that's becoming, I think, one of our focuses. Uh, we have about 40 people working in that business, and it's really key that they have a real focus on automotive. And as you just mentioned, the news last week, we reported that we've been sourced for over 10 more models from our initial uh, customer to come to market in 2018. So that's a, a huge validation of our technology for us. Mm. Why explain a bit more about the strategy of spinning off this, this part of the business, which seems potentially to me to be massively lucrative. It is, but you know, if you think about the automotive sector, there's a long lead time to revenues. You know, the cars take three to four years to design, and we're part of that process. Then volumes to, to increase, again, could take another three to four years. So everybody says that you have to be in automotive for about 10 years before you start to see the returns. And that's a long run for a small aim listed company. So the spin out would allow us to move about 40 people out of the company for the parent company to still retain a majority ownership in that new business and to bring funding in from external sources to fund that longer road to, uh, to revenues. Okay, so to make that clear, then any investor looking at this now will retain an interest in that spin out Absolutely. business. Absolutely, seeing machines would have a, a, a majority interest at least in the, the starting position mm -hmm. and um, would uh, basically go forward from there. And, and, and that's to produce what exactly? This DMS, the, what, what is that going to do? For that's a, a good question. I should help uh, people understand that. So to date, uh, we've been an algorithm supplier. So right now with the current uh, product, we license an algorithm to Takata who then embed it into a ECU which they sell to the car manufacturer. And we're doing a lot of the design work, helping them with the hardware and managing the software side of it. What we find is uh, we're in a royalty position, earning approximately $10 per vehicle. And what we'd like to do is start m mirroring the mobile eye trajectory. So looking at building a module, embedding our software into it. And we're quite advanced. We've been working on this since September. Uh, and to go to market with a module, which would inc increase our stake from, you know, the revenue stake from probably $10 per car to uh, north of $50 per car. Com comp Competition in this area? None looking inward. You know, so Mobileye is really an outward-looking uh, ADAS solution, and what we're finding is we are the really the, the leader in the inward-facing technology today. I'm mm. sure there there are tier ones trying to ramp up the capability, um, you know, using some of the other algorithms out there. But right now, we definitely have a lead. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's 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 talk about. Um, ultimately when this deal is done, uh, what is Seeing Machines going to consist of then? What, what would be the main part of its business? Well, we have a growing fleet business, which is a direct-to-market business right now, and then we're starting to bring on more distributors and more channel partners, different types of channel partners. So we have the fleet segment. Uh, we have our rail trials. We have two... And, and fleet, fleet is motor... Commercial road, road transport. Road transport. Yeah, yeah, aftermarket product mm. into commercial road transport. We have our rail uh, segment, which is really nascent, a nascent business, where we have two trials mounted up in North America now, where we're gathering data and developing a better understanding of what the, t the technology will have to do in a locomotive or a commuter train. And then there's the aviation sector, again, which uh, is, is quite interesting right now. We started some work with uh, Boeing last year, which led to putting our product into a simulator uh, for evaluation purposes. And that's spreading now from not only the training side, but commercial aircraft, uh, defense-related aviation uh, or aerospace, and into air traffic control as well. Does that have the potential to move faster than the road side of the business, I mean, which you're talking about a long lead time? I believe so. I think with, with aviation, I think we'll see 
uh, you know, it's a lower volume, higher value uh, proposition. And I think, I think we'll see activity more quickly. There's a lot of, um, I guess, non-recurring engineering services being funded in that sector right now. And we will grow our business that way over the next three or four years. And, and is your strategy to repeat what you're doing with DMS with Takata uh, again for, for, for the aerospace business and for trains? You will ultimately end up spinning off but retaining a large slice of it. You know, I th it depends. What we want to do is make sure we're as high on the value chain as possible. So we're, we really don't want to be a, a supplier of a, an algorithm unless we absolutely have to be. So we'd rather own some piece of the supply chain, some piece of the product, and try and get more money per unit. Mm. Okay. Uh, what's 2016 got in store now for, for, for seeing machines? Uh, wh where are you going? What's, what's the most important product that you're working on at the moment? I think it's uh, two in parallel. I think the fleet product, you know, we have uh, inventory, we have customers, we've mounted up a number of trials. We're launching, uh, the product is being launched with a forward-facing camera uh, last week at a, a truck show in North America, very, very well received. We've got some large opportunities that we're pursuing on the fleet side. So I think fleet will become a, a large business over the next two or three years. You know, it's new for us. We're learning every day. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, two steps forward, one little step backwards, but that's uh, the nature of business. And then the automotive side, which uh, right now, you know, we're, we're being paid money by nine different OEMs to do something for them, and I think that'll transition into programs and into more and more models. So I think we're targeting, by the end of 2017, you know, I'd really aspire, or our, our uh, 16 financial year, I'd aspire to have, you know, being sourced for well over 30 models of cars by then. Uh, and when will we know the, the, the manufacturer involved here? Because uh, you kept that under close wraps, didn't you? Yeah, I think until they launch this first product, it's, uh, it's pretty hush-hush. And um, But the, uh, you know, we really are dealing with the, the, the world's automotive manufacturers now. And 2016 will be the year when investors know who that is? Do you anticipate? Uh, the vehicle will go into production at the end of this calendar year and people will be driving it in early 2017. Yeah, that's, that's very exciting. Um, do you have the money to, um, to, to do all the work that you're planning or are you going to have to go to the that's market? That's a good question. The, uh, you know, if we stick to our strategy as, uh, as discussed over the last two years, I think we're fine. Uh, and it's really whether we want to be more aggressive and do things more quickly, such as spin out the automotive business, you know, where we want to uh, put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, good. Well, look, um, all strength you're on. Uh, Ken, thanks very much indeed uh, for, for joining us with an update. Uh, that is uh, Ken Kroger. He is the chief executive of Seeing Machines.